So welcome back to my channel. This is Gamer Dom, and this is this week's rambles for the full. Um, so we're going to take a quick look down uh, some of the developments coming through. We've got some insight into the uh, Christmas stuff that we're liking to be getting, including some rather su su um, surprising premium tanks that might be available as part of that. Um, watch this space. Also, uh, Wargaming sprung a whole new tank line on us. Of course, it's Russian, but it is a whole new tank line. So we shall see what that's all about. All in super test at the moment. Um, also, another developer's Q&A. Oh, joy. So insight into some of the things that are coming. Um, and Wargaming putting to bed some of the moans from the player base. I think it was the Czech player base in this case. So anyway, and lots more besides. So let's hop on in. So this is kind of interesting and exciting in the same uh, same degree. This is uh, Daily Bounces Harkonnen, who is a really, really good source. I really recommend you head over to uh, the Daily Bounce when you get a chance to have a look at some of the stuff he posts up there. He doesn't just do World of Tanks. He does uh, War Thunder and um, World of Warships and so forth, but always seems to have his... I think he's a con community contributor, so he gets insight into a lot of stuff. So he says in this article he's been... Um, looking around the World of Tanks files um, since the update of 9.21 um, and found um, a folder with lots of different images in it which look very much like the holiday op operations stuff. So, um, as we know this year, Wargaming have said that uh, a bit like last year, there'll be some kind of uh, collection system, so you win baubles, trinkets whatever to go on a christmas tree and to decorate your garage in some way and and there's random boxes i think last year we had uh, the swedish girl crews were, were made available uh, so this year they've said there'll be a similar kind of thing but we don't really know much about it um but uh, harkonnen's found all this very interesting stuff um which you know we don't know 100 percent is is true but there appears to be the chance to win, yep, wait for it, Hype 59, a Lorraine 40 ton, a Scorpion G, and a Patriot. Or the T26 E5, the Naked Patriot, um, as part of, these, part of these awards. So that's pretty damn sh good. <laughs> so um, it looks like the, you'll be able to get boxes during the event which contain boosters, so normal crew boosters inscriptions emblems female crew members seven days of premium account um, and then there's something called new york style and unknown tank so what is speculating it is speculation at this stage we don't know whether it's two or not but um harkin is pretty usually pretty good um new york, new york style seems to relate to the recent camo patterns revealed in the russian region so this is there's some specialized uh, camo that you can get they look mostly god awful but it looks like you might well be able to earn one of those through these boxes you're going to win in the uh, in the event um and then the unnamed tank now he's speculating that it might be randomly one of these four tanks so you could potentially win a hype 59 if that is your bag um so there you go that's interesting i think um we shall see we we don't know he's also found all the emblems there you go lots of christmas emblems decoration styles so there's four different uh hangers you can decorate there's the western soviet modern western asian styly um, so depending on how you choose to go with that, uh, presumably there'll be different awards depending on which one you go for. Um, and then the decorations, which was a, looks very similar to last year when on the Christmas tree, once you got a set, you got another box, didn't you? Something, I can't remember exactly how it worked. But uh, anyway, there you go. Interesting stuff. But uh, yeah, it, uh, speculation is rife, so to speak, that uh, you may have a chance to get the Type 59, Lorraine 40 ton, Scorpion G, or the T26 E5. Now, how many of these are out there in the boxes? I don't know. We'll f hopefully find out in due course. But, um, hey, something for nothing, right? So Harkonnen's continued his digging and now found even more out about what's coming up. Hope, uh, if this is a spoiler for you, don't look, don't look at this anymore. Um, but, um, yeah, options to customise your uh, hangar. So this is the holiday uh, hanger which is kind of cool uh, opportunity to customize it with uh, house lights tree snowman posts and yard 
Each of these areas have decorations to add. The more you add, the higher up your festive atmosphere will go. So that, remember, that was how it worked last year. You went up different grades of holiday atmosphere, and as you went up, it unlocked a certain number of treats. Um, and as you went higher, you got the female crews. So the levels will go from 1 to 10, and at each level you will un unlock a discount on a tier vehicle. I'm not sure if this discount is directly linked to the level. For example, level 4 will reward discounts on level 4 vehicles. we we'll have to wait to see if that's the case, but there'll be something like that. There's also, uh, f as we talked about just a minute ago, there's four collectibles to complete, traditional Soviet, modern and Chinese. Each of these, each collection will earn additional bonuses to your battle results, unique emblems and inscriptions. The collection is made of five tiers and each tier has 12 decorations must collect except for tier five which has 13. So what's that? Five, uh, five, 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 60, 61 decorations times four. That's a lot of decorations. <laughs> But I expect you can buy them in the shop, so that's all good. Uh, each New Year collection will give you a bonus to a particular nation, and the bonus is increased by the number of decorations collected and multiplied for the festive atmosphere. Uh, how to increase the bonuses? So, collection. So, if you collected one to seven decorations for, say, Chinese one, you'll get no bonuses. If you've got, however, nineteen to thirty-six, you get two percent level bonus, which is, you know, something. The bonus is added to experience credits and credit experience earned during a battle. With level 10 atmosphere, the base bonus will be multiplied by 12. Wow. So if you got up to that, does that mean you get 48? Is that my right? 48% increase on all those? That's pretty good. Uh, once you complete a full collection, you will be re rewarded Christmas style. A, cr a unique set that contains the camouflage inscription, emblem and base colour. Four holiday inscriptions, the inscriptions awarded for complete, completing the collection and the emblem for completing that. So there you go, if that's your bag. Um, boxes, nothing much new here as last year. Players will get boxes by completing the holiday missions or they'll be able to purchase them from the premium shop. Each box will give the player more decorations and even and few more rewards. Uh, strongly believe there's a chance of a random drop of a tier eight premium tank from time to time, but I can't confirm this. Um, so please remember, it's almost like gambling. There's no guarantees you'll be rewarded a, a premium tank. But clearly, that's what Wargaming are hoping you'll be suckered in for. You'll go and spend however much it is on those little boxes on the hope that you get lucky. Um, crafting decorations. In order to complete the collect, uh, collections, players will be able to get to. Um, sorry, in order to complete collect collections, players will have to get a complete set. But how, what do you do with repeat decorations? Well, a bit like last time, you'll be able to brace, combine them to build them into something new using the uh, large hedron decoder. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> So anyway, it's interesting, and uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I knock wargaming as much as everybody else does, but they do these sort of events really, really well. And I think last year's was great fun, added a lot to the game, um, and this one looks to be even better. So kudos to them, well done. I'm looking forward to it, and it's free stuff, right? Well, unless you buy it, in which case, you know what I mean. Well, this one came out of nowhere. So um, Armoured Patrol and some of the other bloggers are reporting that uh, Super Testers are trying a new Russian heavy tank line. So three tanks, eight, nine and ten, um, basically coming in. Well, we don't know where they're going to connect, whether it's going to be through the IS-3 or elsewhere, or whether it goes in the uh, KV, whatever it is, KV-4 line. Um, but there is these three new tanks, two of which we don't know anything about other than their names, um, but one we do. So the first one, uh, Tier 8, is the ISM, or the also known as the IS-2SH. This was a tank that I think has been bouncing, or bouncing around in Super Test and, uh, for quite some time. Uh, finally seems to be uh, being used, utilised in some way. There's also the Object 705 at Tier 9 and the uh, Object 705A at Tier 10. Now the feature of these tanks, as you can see, is they all appear to be rear turreted tanks. They also have this fantastic, vi um, what do you call it, sort of like a, a boat hull 
sides to them that slopiness is is makes them very very powerful it's the same sort of armor that that t20 that ill-fated t22 uh, cheat tank had um, if you remember that was the mission tank that uh, a lot of the top clans got banned for cheating to get their hands on because it was completely overpowered and it was partly because of this side armor uh, had very good frontal armor and very good side armor because of this angling uh, the this sort of hull shape um, means that any shots coming in here are automatically shot down you know deflected um, makes the arm side arm incredibly powerful and if it's got very good frontal armor as well these things are going to be brutes so the, they're saying here on arm patrol definitely the characteristic of this is armor uh, and they'll come this will be implemented sometime in 2018 we've got a little bit of insight into the tier 8 so let's have a look at that one so here you go here's the ism so it's a basically a rear turreted uh, is3 with extra armor so uh, as Harkonnen saying here on his blog on this line is that uh, the feature of these tanks is basically they're going to be like a Russian super heavies, Russian obese tanks, um, very, very heavy armor, very big, heavy tanks, no mobility, pretty reasonable guns with very high alpha. It seems to be the, the model these are following. You can see it's, uh, well, I don't know whether it's a pretty tank or not, really. Uh, you'd be the judge of that. So here's some of the initial stats. Bear in mind, this is super test. Could change yet. So this is the tier 8. Uh, 1,500 hit points, which is fairly standard. 120, 120, 80 armor. 120 side armor. Jeez. So as I say, with the angling of this thing, and look at that sloping. And with this V-shape that it's got here, uh, that is going to be a brute to take on from the front. Turret is two, uh, 250, 140, 120. We'll have to see whether it has the same weak spot as the IS-3 has. Don't know about that, obviously, until we see any collision models. Um, average penetration is not particularly brilliant. 212 in the modern meta is not outstanding, but it's okay. Uh, 240 with, uh, AP, with uh, APCR, presumably, that's what it's got. 390 average damage. Reload time of a uh, very tardy 12.6, rate of fire 4.7 rounds per minute, aim time of 3, damage per minute, per minute is only 1800, uh, accuracy of 0.42. So it's a derp in your face kind of gun. You you want to you use the armor, you get in close, and you just try and hit things. Uh, seems to be the ang seems to be the way it works. Uh, turret traverse of 32 degrees per second, tra uh, hull traverse of 26 degrees, which is very slow. It's not that slow actually overall 35 kph is actually pretty quick for a big monster like that i mean we'll have to see what the ground resistances are like 12 in reverse uh 350 um view range so yeah don't know don't know kind of be an interesting one that is for sure so i've managed to find some uh well, it's not like i hunted around i found some collision models which were on the uh, status report uh, so you can see some of the uh, armor profiles. So the turret does look pretty good. So you've got almost an impenetrable bit in the middle here of spaced armor. Very thick here and here. Rooftop doesn't seem to have any particular weak spots. So it, dep it depends how high this tank is. Uh, this front plate, what's that? 160. Angled backwards. Yeah. Lower plate, I mean lower plate is very strong. That's around 220. Not that well angled, but if you come out if you you get a shot coming in this way that's going to be almost impossible to pen and uh, so that looks pretty good up uh, this engine deck or what yeah, i suppose it is the engine deck because the turrets at the rear so the engine deck is a weak spot for this for sure so if you've got a high tank you might better fire down on it but there you go bit of a brute eh? bit of a brute usual lardy ass so there you go that is the uh, ISM, the upcoming Tier 8 regular Tech Tree heavy tank, Russian head, uh, heavy tank, going to be part of the new, uh, proposed new heavy tank line on the Russian side. Interesting. Let me know. So as we know, Wargaming managed to balls up um, the chat and uh, platooning function for quite a long time. It now seems to have largely been... Uh, um, it seems to be working now so you can see your chat 
you can see your friends list and all the other bits and bobs so as a way of saying sorry for cocking up they've given us a little a thank you reward so between the 11th of december and the 25th of december if you pump the thank you t4 n k y o u code into your um, code activation on the website you will be given a free premium day three personal reserves of 50 percent for two hours three personal reserves of 100 percent for two hours and three personal reserves of 100 uh, percent free xp for two hours as a thank you it's something it's nice didn't think they really needed to do it frankly but i'm not going to say no i've got mine get yours before the 25th of december so it seems like uh, Wargaming don't really know what they're doing with the uh, <laughs> Russian um, tank destroyer line, the Object 263 line. So remember we talked about this in the last couple of rambles, I think. First of all, they were talking about um, bringing the 263, scrapping the 263, weren't they, um, entirely. Then they were going to move it down a tier. Um, and apparently Status Report is um, quoting uh, Development Director Milos Gabarek, um, who apparently on some stream the other day said that the proposal to move the Object 263 to Tier 9 and bring in a new Tier 10 was a pretty bad idea. Um, now, th for some reason, this tank, more than anything else, has, uh, has caused a lot of um, angst amongst, amongst the player base. It's a very popular tank amongst many of the players, and uh, the idea that it's going to be downgraded in some way um, caused more of a ship barn than many of the other changes have been proposed so this was very very well received so uh, we'll see we'll see whether that's just they're just farting in the air i don't know what they're doing over there in, in minsk but uh, clearly it's not quite what they want um the f feedback from particularly the russian player base and um, be under no illusion the wargaming only really care about the russian player base in terms of feedback um, so if they're not happy, then it tends to be that's the way they go because there's just many, many more players there in Russia. Um, although, you know, <laughs> the bank balance comes from the EU primarily. So, yeah, but we, we don't get much of a say in terms of what we really want unless you're a super unicorn, obviously. Um, so, I don't know, we'll see whether this changes. Um, be nice to know i'm working my way down the 263 line i'd like to get to the 263 it does look a bit of a brute um but um looks like that change proposed change uh is on hold or maybe even scrapped we shall see so next up i saw this trick on um one of the facebook pages that i follow from world of tanks and um so kudos to I can't remember who it was now, uh, I think a Croatian guy, he wanted this out first. Um, if you're short of cash and you don't use any of these emblems, easy way to make some money. You can sell them now in the new patch. So if you own this one, so for instance, oh, this, this one here, I don't even remember where I got this from. Ah, not that one. I don't own it anymore. Let's find this one. Here we go. So... I can sell it for 10,000 credits. Boom. Now, don't, really, don't know about you, I have a couple of tanks where I have um, some emblems on, but largely I can't be asked with them, to be honest. Um, so, and I don't know where these have all come from, probably some sort of missions that I didn't even know I'd got them from. Um, but if you don't want them, just sell them. There you go there's six of those so that's 60,000 credits so I've I reckon I've made a couple of million out of doing this so if you're interested and you need a couple of million <laughs> that's an easy way to do it thought you might be interested let's say not my original find somebody else found this and I just relay it on to you folks so good way of generating a bit more cash because you're gonna need it with all the 50% off and 100% off coming in the Christmas period. No, not really. They're not going to do that, really. No, no. You might get 15% off if you're lucky. Anyway, hope you found that useful. So everyone loves a good Q&A, don't they? So this was a QA, and a I think, by the Czech community uh, developers. So um, some interesting stuff. The usual sort of... Um, 
well kind of conspiracy theory stuff so you know, why do you manipulate rng and matchmaking of individual players the closer i get to my teeth my third mark the worse the rng has been um and they've said quite rarely we don't do that but tin foil hatters will always be present i like that so basically yeah no they don't do that why would they bother why why would you stop people getting three marks of excellence or make them you know suffer just because of whatever random reason it makes no sense at all um if you wanted them to spend more money fair enough but uh yeah no definitely not uh is there any new check tanks uh planned not for now um will there be a new tier 7 premium then uh, for the check 3 because they could do with one and uh they've said oh this was the check uh, it was check developers sorry um they're looking for one but they haven't decided anything yet are there any plans for tanks with special camo like the defender Ugh. um so basically they're saying we've got the new customization patch in the new patch so why would you bother um so and why would you bother full stop what to do about the type 5 and type 5 uh, type 4 guns this is the japanese super obese everybody hates the the fact you don't need any skill to fire the he at them um, even though they then just switch to a, uh, a pcr or heat and um, don't need any skill to use them but it doesn't matter that doesn't matter because only noobs using he guns whereas highly skilled professional players use the uh, the two key all the time and that's acceptable um and they said as they always do when people moan about the japanese obese they're saying statistically it's not a problem a there aren't many out there being played and they're not particularly op uh, everybody moans a bit like they used to with the artillery actually when you get one shotted by a type 5 or type 4 you moan like buggery but you forget all the dozens of times when um, they've done like 50 damage to you or 100 damage to you and you've piled apcr rounds into their hull without any kind of problem at all um, they also as they point out that this they also suck on various tech uh, various um maps i know if i get um uh, lakeside i i get absolutely um i hate it because you can't get away if there's somebody's an efficient scout um they'll get down the middle before you've even got into cover and the next thing you know you've lost pretty much all your health so so with type four type fives remaining as it is for the time being um is tank weakness removal the new black so basically they're talking about the fact the chrysler didn't have any weak spots it did lower plate uh, the new badger apparently doesn't have any weak spots it does but whatever uh it's this idea again that you ought to be able to pen everything from the front with whatever gun you've got because reasons uh each tank has some even the types have been uh, uh even the types before the nerf sides rear poor maneuverability and speed not all maps allow good gameplay for all tanks um the new badger for example very situational very slow so there you go um so the you know the, the, then it's not policy to remove weak spots it just happened in the chrysler k when i don't even agree that was the case um what about those machine gun ports which have disappeared on the hd models um so they're saying well actually from a historical basis um machine gun ports weren't particularly weak spots but um I, you know i tend to disagree with that you should, it's a game so leave the hit, leave somewhere where people can shoot through the front if they if they know what they're doing and they can be bothered to aim properly rather than just hitting the two key so also a uh, question about other tanks will some of the older tanks be rebalanced and they're saying definitely they've done well they've almost finished rebalancing eight to ten and now going to be looking at tier six and seven um, but that'll be a tougher crack, a tougher nut to crack since lower tiers are sometimes just like tin cans with guns. Well, yeah. Um, suggestion on the stream was why not just increase the eight hit points of lower tier tanks? Um, then the games would last longer and be less fr frustrating. Um, and the developer said, yeah, interesting, but I think that will actually make it worse. I don't know, really, don't have a problem with that uh object 907 don't know what that means whether they mean this is just a poor tank needs balancing i don't know um and the response is another heavy topic we don't have enough enough information about it to change it properly the tank is played by a very small player base so the stats are limited uh, bes beside its reward for hard work and skills so the current owners wouldn't be too pleased with a nerf um so yeah 
maybe they're talking about it being too strong i don't know don't know much about the object 907 uh e50m and the leopard one uh fiddly m is a good tank and has been buffed lately so there's no sense in doing it again the leopard in turn is very good at second third line sniper if you get spotted first then you and it won't go so well but it's stats uh, but with its stats we don't see it needs a buff <clears throat> fair enough uh, why is the type 64 available in the tech tree uh, and in the prem shop but the 1357 uh, girlfriend and the bulldog girlfriend is not um, you answer the question yourself the type 64 is a regular premium the other two are special occasion tanks we can't nerf them um, uh, basically they're saying that the uh, the black bulldog and the 1357 are just too strong um, when the rebalancing of light tanks happened they were balanced for the old matchmaking not for the new matchmaking and actually they're a little bit too strong so as they don't like to do any kind of nerfing of premium tanks they just basically said they're not selling it again yeah but they said that about the e25 didn't they i know and the mutant yeah i know but this time they mean it i'm sure another rt rebalance Arty Winers are less prominent than some time ago. I love that. Arty Winers. Yeah. Pussies. Uh, we won't introduce a one Arty per battle limit because we don't think Arty is a problem. I agree completely. And frankly, if you didn't have Arty, I've said this before, and I know it isn't popular, but if you didn't have Arty in games, all you do is get those flipping heavy turreted tank destroyers and uh, heavy turreted uh, medium tanks like the object uh, 140 just going hull down and good luck killing them you will just be uh, annihilated at least if they stop and hide somewhere um, there's a chance that RT might start smacking them once so they have to keep moving I know when I go into a game in a higher tier match and there's no artillery and I'm playing something that can go hull down efficiently effectively I'll play this game completely different to how I'll play it if there's artillery in the game and you know that's a fact so you know get rid of arty you completely unbalance it and I think good on wargame to say screw you now I do think three per game is maybe a bit too much I think maybe two would be a good balance but hey I'm not going to argue uh, stun mechanic changes not now probably not in the future just leave arty around alone for god's sake gold ammo changes Many players bemoan it, but we looked into the stats and saw the difference in successful penetration is actually minimal. Some players want gold and uh, gold ammo only for gold, but that would introduce a play to win aspect, and we wouldn't want a play to win, would we? Um, so this is all tied up um, together. Do we? Um, is the pr should the gold price be reduced for ammo? And they said no, that wouldn't make sense. So I don't get this. So. If they're saying the stats show that penetration difference is actually minimal, I call bullshit, right? I mean, some tanks get like 30, 40 extra mils of penetration, or even more with their gold shells. Um, you know, think about the Type 54, oh, sorry, Type 50, the T-54 spamming heat everywhere. That's not an insignificant increase in penetration that's a lot so I, I think bullshit I still think they should limit the amount of gold but I'm not going to go there because Pixie will get upset um, you know 10% that's all I'm saying just 10% of your tank work, uh, loadouts could be gold that would be to me simplest thing to do but they won't uh, why were the Fosh and Death Star lines changed we've been through this a million times basically they couldn't balance them properly they um the fosh was uh too hard to balance so they thought removing it and putting a tank that actually works better if you load gold was the best way to go no i didn't say that um and the death star just didn't fit so that's why they took that one out why even bother aiming if rng is present um and i agree with them here they're saying if they didn't have rng the game would be pretty boring if you aimed at somebody there's an 80 percent chance that you'd hit where you want and a 20 percent uh um don't understand what they're saying there but yeah basically they're saying it, it wouldn't be fun without rng and i agree with them if you knew every time you fired somebody you'd hit them would that would you lose your excitement in the game i don't know i know it's frustrating as hell when a shell that you've perfectly lined up aimed perfectly 
and then whizzes off into the distance somewhere and the next one next two go dead straight i, I know it's a bit frustrating but i think you need some variability it's like i play um, tabletop games and in that they bring variability in by just rolling dice um and yeah it's frustrating as hell as when that perfect situation you've got yourself into and your charge is about to go home and suddenly you roll three ones and nothing happens um yeah it's, it's frustrating as hell but it's a game and otherwise it would be a bit I, we also used to play um i used to play a game that um i won't go into the rule system but it was a um a napoleonic game and the rules were so predictable there was not enough variability so me and my friend nick would set our games up we'd look at the map look at the table and go well you're going to win there i'm going to win there we're going to win there uh that's going to be a little bit tighter and and it always happened exactly as we think because there was no unpredictability in the game we knew each other's play styles we knew how we were going to play it and we knew how the rule system was going to do it and we stopped playing the rules simple as that because it was boring so you need randomness you need some sort of change in it uh, many games end in landslides um, what's been done about that now again i don't really see this maybe i'm just i don't know they're saying that uh, the results of uh, landslides has increased with the new matchmaking um, and now the average match time is around four to five minutes and they're looking to change this um i i don't know what i i don't see it particularly every so often you get games where you just literally rampage all over um but i don't see it any more than i used to but maybe i'm just not really paying much attention uh what about limited matchmaking vehicles and they said this is a real he headache for us now the current we know that the eights are in currently in hell and the nines in heaven and we want to adjust the matchmaking so it looks similar to the tier nines for the tier eights uh, we don't want to touch the limited matchmaking tanks now, but we'll look into it to the next new year. So, yeah, it's a mess. It's a problem. The only real limited matchmaking, I think, that plays pretty well these days, well, two of them, that WZ11111 Chinese Premium, which is limited matchmaking, that's pretty good. And the Super Pershing uh, is also pretty good. The rest of them are pretty much garbage. I hardly ever play my limiteds anymore, which is, oh, apart from the E25, of course, but that's godlike. Uh, why not just introduce plus one matchmaking? Um, and they said the two tier spray gives wider ability to choose players. During uh, one map, you're on top, and the next you're at the bottom. Um, we're working on matchmaking all the time. For example, placing tanks in subgroups like auto loaders or super heavies. The issue is that with more rules um, to the matchmaking, the ha it's harder to gather the lineup. So yeah, particularly when there's less players online, it's hard to match up the teams. Um, do you plan to reduce map picking for players? So this was something which was speculated, I think, was it last Rambles we talked about this? The ability to deselect certain maps when you're about to play. Um, and they've said absolutely not, that's not happening. Um, because otherwise, as I said, you'll just see super heavies on Himmelsdorf and Malinovka would just be light tanks and artillery. Uh, you know, you've got to have that variability somewhere. Um... I'm not gonna, uh, there's more stuff about the 263 um, mods and ban mods and what have you talking about that they're still continuing to try and ban people um, you know still you got people streaming it for God's sake geez um, they're talking about maybe we should have a modless client so you can't use mods and you, you know what have you but they're saying um, what they're saying here is that if you don't, people get upset. If you don't allow mods, people get upset. There was a uh, Grand Theft Auto. Apparently they had a real um, fallout with their player base because they tried to block use of mods and eventually had to relent and let them back into the game. So uh, better to have controlled mods rather than no, no mods at all. Uh, XVM, should we get rid of it? Blah, I, you know. XVM is both a bane and a boon. I like it because I like to be able to see the standard of the players I'm with and I'm up against it's just to have you know I can tailor how I try and tailor how I'm playing according to that but I know for particularly again for the unicums who love to moan about everything they feel they get uh, targeted unfairly by artillery because they're a blue player so um, but you know live with it I think now you don't have that mod that tells you what the win chance is that's a good thing um, but um, anyway whatever uh, why do AFK players receive XP and silver? Um, and I saw this on another chat, actually. It's, you know, they're, they're making the point, 
It's not always the case that people are AFK during a game. It's their fault. It can just be um, connectivity problems. You know, we we live, well, I live largely in an area of pretty good broadband, um, but some people are not so lucky. They can live in areas where it's a bit flaky and maybe they've logged in and then the, and the, their connectivity drops and they can't you know get start the game so why should they be punished for it if they do it repetitively then they should be punished um and that's what they said if the algorithms pick up that this repetitively happening they'll be punished which i think is fair uh will there be lower tier modes like the grand battle equivalent we're working on new game modes all the time the halloween event was top uh was the effort of the top eu and iu clans meeting in minsk and we're working on ranked battles. We can tell you there'll be a nice event during the holidays. So, yeah, looks like there will be other things coming. I'd love to see grand battles. 30 v 30s at tier 6 or something it would be great. be really good fun. Uh, are you kidding with the bond income in grand battles? Um, so basically they're moaning about the fact you only get like one or two in a battle. I think the most I've ever seen is about 19 or 20 in one battle. And they're saying, you know, at that rate, how the hell are you going to afford to... To, to use them it's like i don't know thousands of um, needed to buy equipment um it'll, for that rate it will take you like 20 years to get enough to put any on any tanks and you know again i do not understand the purpose of bonds to me they it, it just make better players better and indeed this was the response that they said um they're basically for players that good players <laughs> So we don't want people to be running around with loads of them on their tanks. Just the very, very best to now have even better tanks. Yeah, logic. Uh, what about change to the stronghold? Um, uh, yeah, he said, not my job, mate, basically. Um, during the Halloween event, you used bots. Does that mean play, player versus PvE is coming? Um, they're basically saying unlikely unlikely uh why is every patch ridden with bugs um well you know it happens guys if you work in it you know that never in no system is ever perfect when you put it in you have to patch it so get over it um a mac version but no they're talking about the fact that it's not worth it because the player base is too small a new server for eu they're talking about do we need that and they're saying no um, there's just not there's plenty of players on there's plenty of room on the two servers and I think there is to be honest also for the techies out there what program language do they use a world of tanks it's partially C++ and the servers use Python uh, the UI is action script 3 um, so there you go I, it means nothing to me uh, what happened about the nation uh, bat, uh, March of Nations so that was that uh, reward thing where you got into the top uh, of the charts for playing your different tanks uh, EU and Russia had the same rewards North America got a marathon because the situation was reversed last time so last time North America didn't get any um, any marathon whereas the other regions did so this time it's the other way around basically Minsk doesn't decide about EU events but it comes out of Paris well it's damn French is for you uh, Defender no changes don't know what they mean by that I presume is it going to be nerfed or is it going to be sold no 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 will it be sold don't know <laughs> you know someone asked about some of these clan tank reward tanks i'd love the chieftain t95 looks a lovely tank not very good but it looks lovely but they're saying they won't be sold um because they have clan reward tanks why would you give away a reward tank um what about tanks being removed from the prem store uh, they're sold on special occasions and the Type 59 won't be sold as long as I'm responsible for the future of the w uh, world of tanks. Okay, fairly clear. Uh, why does War, uh, War, uh, Wargame remove boosts? Because there's a mod showing them and it's too uh, made it too easy. Don't understand that one. Uh, T10, will it be changed? There's a few variants of what we can do. So basically they're still looking at the T10. This was talked about, speculated some time ago that that was a line they were looking at modifying in some way. T10 do, sort of doesn't fit, sort of does. It's a bit less armoured than the rest of the tanks in that line. Um, maybe they just need to put more armour on it. Oh well. Um, and the, 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 the final question, which I actually agree, is why don't they show the, all the true stats in the garage? So when you go into your garage, you can see all the different 
factors of the various vehicles but you can't see things like ground resistance and movement bloom and that sort of thing um, you have to go on some of the other websites to find those sort of details and I, I sort of see what they're saying they're saying typical players get headaches seeing all that they don't want to see it all um, and there are external sites where you can go and find it if you want to so they're not really secret but just to me if you're going to put the stats up put them all up um, but eh, I don't know anyway there you go some interesting stuff um, not all of it surprising some of it yeah kind of hilarious really but uh, it's always interesting to see what's in the minds of the developers and uh, what they're thinking about for the future and coming down the line oh my god look at this god awful thing so um, as part of the holiday ops um, this year there's apparently some special camo that you can get to make your tank look even more ridiculous than they do already look at this thing what the hell i just yeah words fail me um so apparently there's four different um camos special camos that you can put on your tank if you so wish look at that why would you oh, i don't know Anyway, um, so Harkonnen's guessing that they aren't permanent, that they'll only be temporary, um, and basically you better put them on as part of the tank, um, basically as part of these um, bundles that you'll get for completing various missions over the Christmas period, there'll be these camos in them. Frankly, I'll just be selling them, uh, because I hate that sort of thing. It just looks friggin' ridiculous. Um, as I do with the um, the new um, camo on the, uh, uh, the paint your own camo on the tanks. I just I don't understand why you want that kind of stuff. Uh, but maybe I'm just an old fart. Um, well, maybe not. Maybe I am an old fart and I don't really care. I want to see the tanks actually look like goddamn tanks, not like some kind of I don't know, cartoon version. Um, but um, I know everybody's the same and maybe they're loving this new camo you can get in. 9.21 i personally made sure the button was clicked that said uh historic only because uh, i don't give a toss what then i don't have to worry about what people have spent their gold on um, they can look at their tanks in their full glory i will be doing the same with these things if uh as long as you don't actually have to see these god awful eyesores anyway let me know what you think so thanks for watching i hope you found that interesting and useful um don't know whether i'll do one next week um but if i don't then i wish you all a happy christmas and a very prosperous new year uh, but um in the meantime enjoy your games have fun try not to take it too seriously and i will see you again soon um in the meantime subscribe if you get a chance thank you very much and i'll see you again soon this is gamer dom signing out